Today's episode has been released in association with Vinyl Kaiju Legion, Facebook's number one online vinyl store and the perfect place to grab yourself some awesome Japanese monster toys. Make sure you also check out their website for everything Vinyl Kaiju related, both old and new. So it's the final episode of the Tokyo toy hunting trip. The first episode we checked out Akihabara, then we checked out the Mandaraki Mall, and then in the third episode we checked out Harajuku. So in this episode we're going to check out a couple of my favourite places for toy hunting in Tokyo, Japan. One of them being the Shibuya Mandaraki. So as many of you will already know, I'm a big time toy collector. I've been all over the world and I've checked out some amazing places, but in my opinion, the best place to go is Tokyo, Japan. So there's two Ultraman stores in Tokyo. The first one is at the Kyoto Mall. Now the Kyoto Mall is attached to the Tokyo Skytree. The Tokyo Skytree is the biggest structure in Tokyo. It now has surpassed the Tokyo Tower and the mall that's attached to it has got everything. So this is a place where like the official Pokemon Center store is. So you can go in there, check out all the stuff on the Pokemon. Hundreds that I don't recognize anymore because I've not watched that for many years. But it's very cool if you're into Pokemon. There's like a whole center set up that's just full of all the characters and all the merchandise. You can get food in there. There's all the six snacks. Uh, and if you go to the top of the sky tree at the time there was actually an Avengers exhibit. The first time we went there was a Star Wars exhibit and both of them are two of my favourite things so it was, it was awesome. But I was specifically here to check out the Ultraman store. So the first Ultraman store, the one that's inside the Tokyo Sky Tree Mall, is just full of all the coolest merch. Everything from like the Bandai tagged figures, which they've got like every single Ultraman Kaiju ever there. So obviously I picked up a few of them. And it's just full of all the crazy merch, it's full of all the, uh, every single episode on DVD, which I'd love, but I'm not even sure if they'd play on my PlayStation 4. And I weren't there to buy DVDs, a lot of the shops in Japan sell like, sick DVDs, but the, the chances of them even being in English or playing on our systems is uh, probably very unlikely. But it was just good to see that you could buy every single episode of Ultraman. The thing that I really love about Japan is that, well one of the things that I really love about Japan is that you can, you go into an Ultraman store and they don't just sell the new Ultraman, they sell every single Ultraman right back to the 70s. So that's a really cool thing, like if we could go into the Disney store and buy the original, and buy a doll of the original 70s Spider-Man, like that's something that we just never see over here in the Western world. But in Japan, that's just something that there's rife with. So if you want to buy a Kamen Rider toy, you can buy the newest Kamen Rider all the way to the old one and the Ultraman store is no different. The second Tokyo store is in a place called Keio Street, which is like a mad place to find because it's actually inside a train station. So the only way you can, you can get into Keio Street is going through the train station, paying for a ticket, putting it through the barrier machine, and then there's just like this mad little strip. There's like mad few little malls that you can get to. It was actually the only place that we could find vegan food in Japan. Like, not the only place in Tokyo, but it was like the only place that we could find vegan ramen. I'm sure there is other places, but it's not big for like people like me to eat that kind of food there. So it was wicked that we could get like a sick bowl of vegan ramen in the same place as we could go to the Ultraman store. Again, it had all the Bandai tagged figures, very much like the first shop that we went into, but it had some variations, some different ones. And one of the maddest things I picked up from there was uh, an Ultraman bottle of water I think it's water I never dare drink it. it might be bubble bath I don't know what it is but it's in a sick like transparent bottle of ultra uh, in the Ultraman original uh, or it might be Ultraman diner or the original Ultraman uh, form that was like a drink of water and got pasta they have mad stuff in there I got Ultraman pasta which ironically was one of the only things that we brought back that actually got a damaged box when we come back to England so I've not opened it I've not ate it it's just gone on the shelf with my other toys but yeah, the Ultraman pasta was also mental and there's chopsticks and plates and then there's a whole like kids section of Ultraman and then you've got like the more collectible side of Ultraman. It's got a giant Ultraman 7 stood outside which is my favourite Ultraman. I saw that they had Ultraman 7 
his his specs that he puts on before he transforms, all little cool stuff like that. They had his like Mohawk uh, throwing blade and just tons of original merch and all the coolest stuff to do with Ultraman. So they're two places that are definitely worth checking out. So randomly, without even meaning to, I found another Ultraman store. I can't get enough of buying the little kaijus from there. They're like 600 yen each, which is like $6. It's like £4.50 or something. So I can't, I can't warrant not picking up a couple every time I go past one of the shops. So I'll definitely be back before the trip's over, I'm sure. So the main thing that we wanted to check out in this episode was the Mandaraki in Shibuya. We're back in Shibuya and we're off to find the final Mandaraki toy store. I hear it's a good one. From what I've seen, there's a lot of cool vintage stuff in there. The one in the Broadway Mall was epic, it was awesome, but it wasn't as jumble sale as I sometimes like it. I quite often like it when you've just got a rummage and plumage to try and get the, get the thing that you're looking for. And the Nakano Broadway Mall was very like high-end set out. So I'm hoping that in this shop I can have a good dig, a good rummage and, and come out with at least one thing for the for my collection that looks cool so let's see how we get on. Mandaraki, we talked about these in the first and the second episode. They're kind of like CEX, like Kex that we have here in England uh, and it's kind of like a trading shop where you take your old vintage toys and you trade them in for money and they're all set out so different. So the ones in Akihabara are very much like it's just seven floors of just random stuff so like one floor will just be for trading cards one floor just for kaiju one that's full of more like transformers and mech uh, one floor for vintage one floor for modern toys and then when we went to the mandaraki mall in nakano broadway mall that was like really high-end set out like almost like a museum like beautiful glass cabinets with the best of the best so going to this mandaraki i was hoping that it was a little bit more of a jumble sale kind of thing a little bit more like the shops that we find in akihabara so you head through shibuya it's busy it's one of the busiest places in tokyo it's the home of the famous shibuya crossing the busiest crossing in the world so you head through that part and it took us a while to find but we eventually made our way to this uh, this mad mandaraki in the middle of Shibuya and what's crazy about this one is you can't really miss it from the outside it's got like some mad like big rusty like steampunk kind of post-apocalyptic sculpture thing going on on the outside and the signs there mandaraki so you're heading and then you have to go down so the ones in Akihabara you're going up like seven floors this was like down seven floors completely underground all mad flashy lights felt like you were entering some kind of cave system like some like nuclear bunker Godzilla proof like fallout shelter so you're heading down like seven floors or something like that and then you eventually get to the doors that open I have a feeling this is probably not this small but it's like the so you head inside these double doors and the first thing you walk in you hit instantly with all the mad j-pop music and you're walking through all the the first thing I think you see are just loads of CDs and books and, and manga novels and that kind of thing. So you make your way through them and then I saw a lot of posters. I always like to check out the sick posters. They had some nice Cayman Rider ones and stuff like that. But very much like I said in episode two, we didn't come here to collect posters. <laughs> Cayman Rider posters. So one of the first things I see, and it's one of the first times I saw it in the whole of Tokyo, we saw some in Harajuku, and there are some mega famous stores for this in Tokyo, but I personally, uh, this is the first time that I saw it, and we saw some Safube. So what I'm seeing here, which I haven't seen in a lot of the other stores, is Safube, like art toys. Toys made now by artists, but to look quite 70s, and, and like it was from the, the, the Bullmark kind of, vinyl kaiju era so there's some cool ones they're very very expensive and i know from making some myself man all of the dead balls that it's not cheap to make this stuff so fubi is like mega expensive designer toys that are made by like new age artists in the style of the old kaiju i like to pick up some of these but they are very expensive and if i'm dropping big bucks like that for me personally i like to go for the more vintage stuff but it was still cool to see that they had some of the most famous Safubi artists work inside this mandaraki as well Ultra Tomba. I got one of these from London before. The, the Vomit Baby. They're cool. 
So I'm a little bit further on making my way through this Mandarake and you see that there's a ton of Ultraman and Kamen Rider and Mirror Man and all those classic superhero Toei TV shows. Loads of the sick dolls. A lot of them are like this kind of size, like a bit like a 10 inch, maybe 12 inch. Uh, and, and they look really like kiddie and, and fun, but they're one of my favourite things to collect. So I'm looking at all them and this is when you get into one of these places. It's full of all the coolest shit. I'm trying to film everything. My head's going crazy. I'm just in like Kaiju Overload. So I'm trying to narrow down the things that I'm looking for check prices and um, compare prices to internet and stuff if, it, if it's worth me getting it there or waiting and ordering it online because once I've seen something I just need it in my collection so whether I get it then or whether I order it on eBay and it gets delivered to my house when I come back home I need that so I'm there comparing prices like I said I'm trying to film everything and get cool shots for these little documentaries that we're doing uh, and I'm just looking around and this place is overwhelming it's full and every time you see something that you think yo I'm gonna buy that then you turn around and you see something else this was the final Mandaraki that I was checking out on the trip, so I'm making sure that the last bit of money that I've got left, I'm gonna spend on something special. I find these drawers that you pull out, there was like six crates of drawers just full of random, rammel I like to call it, rammel. Places that you can have a proper good dig and I'm like a fucking mole when it comes to this shit. So I'm digging in there and I don't want to leave no stone unturned. So one of the first things that I pick up was like a, wi a wicked like old school retro robot with Japanese writing all over it. Not even really the thing that I came looking for but it was like less than £20 so I couldn't leave it so I got that. I've talked about this before on the show that if a box is slightly damaged or bent like the figure is ridiculously reduced. So this is, I'd seen this exact robot in the Nakano Broadway mall for way more. This was boxed again but because it had a little bit of a dint and a bash on the corner it was less than £20 so boom that got straight swiped up, no question. By this point I'm also thinking of space in my suitcase, how am I going to move stuff around to make sure I can get it all back to England in one piece because it's like the last few days of the trip. So I'm looking through these drawers and I'm pulling out random stuff for like a couple of quid. I got an old little like puzzle game, Ninja Turtles. I wouldn't normally pick up that kind of thing. I love Ninja Turtles. I don't really pick up the merch anymore, but because it had Japanese writing all over it and it was like a couple of quid, boom, it got uh, it got picked up. I also found a, like a wicked like space gun. Um, dodgy about how I'm even going to bring a gun back through customs, even though it is like a blue plastic toy gun. Um, that's the kind of thing that if it pulls up on a scanner, they're just going to empty all your case. But I thought for a couple of quid, I'll take the risk. And that went into Claudia's suitcase, not mine. Again, I'm looking through there. I find a big bag of like minifigures. I don't even know what minifigures they were, but it was like a pillowcase size, like a big sack of them. And I love minifigures, but they weren't coming back because they were heavy as shit and they weren't going to fit in my suitcase. The mad thing when you're a toy hunter or any kind of like collector when you get to a place like this or a car boot on a market where you find like a big box or a couple of big boxes that are just full of the thing that you love every single thing in your mind just leaves and all you're concentrating on is just digging through this box you could be dying or a terminal illness but in that fucking minute that you're digging through that box nothing else matters you don't care about anything else in the world all you care about is what can i get out of this box so i'm digging through like a crackhead looking for crack in this box of plastic crack i got loads of stuff out of this box it was all like a couple of quid so i'm just digging i'm just grab racking all this stuff that i got out of these boxes so instantly i'm like nice one it's happy i said when i was walking up to this building on the gopro when i was kind of vlogging i was saying like I hope this is a place that I can go digging and uh, I, I wasn't at all disappointed I then turned a corner found another box of like random kaiju and I came out with a Zegra figure Zegra from Gamera so boom I picked up a nice Gamera they're gonna go nice together on the shelf then I'm kind of I'm getting to a point now where I think I've done in the shop turn another corner because this place is massive and they've got a cabinet full of all the gross out figures that I love all your mad balls kind of shit as you know from the other episodes I love me some mad balls so I find these things called wacky ghoulies and it's like the plate that goes in the front of a gumball machine and I fucking love that gumball machine shit and I love this like these mad knockoff gross out mad balls things so I grab them as well I get two on the card proper nice like they're like holy grail things for me I'd have been happy if I came and just found them so boom they come as well Ooh, I just found some nice like uh, 
some nice bootleg like mad ball weird sticky things on the card i'm mad for that like 70s 80s artwork i love stuff in the packaging so there was a nice spot like i said you've got to look where people haven't seen before and those i couldn't even see what price they were they were that tucked behind by this point i've racked up quite a few things um i've spent a, a quite a bit of money with the amount of stuff that i've picked up so i'm thinking yeah man that's probably me done for the day so i go over to the till i pay for all this stuff and i've got a nice bag of toys and then i'm leaving the mandarake we're leaving we're done we're heading out and then i see another cabinet and then i spot it So what I spot in this cabinet is a toy that is like a holy grail amongst toy collectors. This is something that every toy collector I know wants this figure. Whether they collect new, modern, whether they collect old shit, whether they collect 12 inch dolls, they collect kaiju, they collect action figures, no matter what. Everybody wants this figure and it's called the Great Garlu. Now, for every kid who has ever seen a science fiction movie, thrilled to the amazing strength of an out of this world movie monster comes Great Garlu by Marx. So I go over to it and I'm looking and I said to Claudia, I go, oh my God, I think I've just seen a fucking great Garlo. And she's like, oh, she's been in this shop with me hours, bless her, filming me and walking around. If she wants to get food and it's getting late and we need to leave. But I see this great Garlo and I said, don't worry, I ain't going to buy it because it'll be fucking more than I can afford. I just want to see one in the flesh. I want to see one in real life. Great Garlo by Marks. Sickest toys ever. So the Great Garlu is a toy that came out in the 60s made by Louis Marx. It's not even a Japanese toy. It's not even a Japanese toy. But there's one in this fucking Mandarake. So I go over to this cabinet and it's full of cool shit. It's literally full of some of the coolest shit in the shop. The most high expensive shit. Big Shogun Warriors, giant figures, the mad like zombie Japanese playset. I can't even remember the name of it but it's like highly sought after amongst collectors. But I've got my eye on this Great Garlu. And I look and I see the price and I'm like, do you know what? that's not even a bad price. Why? Because it's got a little bit of a ripped loincloth and I talked earlier about if a figure's got a slight bit of damage, I was going into these places going to buy a figure and then they're showing me like a tiny little nick on its knee like are you sure you want it and I'm like fuck yeah. So anyway I've seen this great Garlo, I'm looking it up and down, I've got plenty of shots on it but I kind of have to say to myself do you know what? I, I can't afford it and if I could it ain't gonna fit in my fucking suitcase. It's not happening. I'm gonna have to ship it back. I'm gonna have to post it back. So I kind of I had to be the bigger man and step up and said, you know what, I'm just going to have to leave it. So I left it. I went home with the toys that I'd got and that was my day done. I spent all night just thinking about this great Garlo. I spent all night thinking, oh, I know, but I'm never going to see one again. I'm probably never going to see one again. At this point, I'm probably never going to see a Great Garlo ever again. I show some of my friends back in England this what I've found. My friends in England, my friends in LA, my friends in Texas. I'm showing them this toy and they're all saying, why did you leave it? You're never going to get another one of these. You're never going to see another Great Garlo. So why did you leave it? And I'm thinking, I'm a fucking idiot for leaving that. Start looking at my suitcase, start rearranging things around and I'm thinking, do you know what? I could probably fit it in at a push. At a push, I could probably fit this Great Garlo in. So I make the decision that I'm going to go back the next morning and I'm going to find it. I'm going to see if it's still there. And I barely sleep a wink because I'm fucking obsessive like that. And anybody that knows, anyone that's a collector, whether you collect toys or trainers or clothes or whatever, if there's something in that shop and you know that it's there, you can't sleep. So I barely have any sleep. I'm up ready at 8 a.m. And it's like half an hour on a train away and I'm fucking clucking like a crackhead wanting his crack for this great Garlo. Got the money, everything's sorted. I've got the space in my suitcase, it's ready. So I've got to get up in the morning, we go back on the train and then I've got to wait about for the store to open. So we get some food, I'm waiting about all morning. I'm just like, oh, fucking oh, please open, please open these doors of this shop. Boom, it gets about 10, 10 to 10. I head straight to the Mandarake. Go in, go down all these seven flights of stairs. I'm, blah, 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 blah. I'm proper running, waiting to get to this Grey Garlo. And I run and boom, it's still there. So I'm fucking happy. I go to the guy straight away. I want this Grey Garlo. Let's go. Gets the Grey Garlo out. He's showing me the loincloth because I want to look at it first to make sure it's not going to fall in half or anything. Even though I'd probably still take it because I doesn't need this figure. Uh, he's showing me that there's a ripped loincloth. It no longer drives anymore because it's supposed to drive and pick stuff up. Like I didn't even expect it to work. This is like a fucking rusty old mechanical toy from the 60s. I didn't expect it to work. That's fine. Uh, and that's why it's such a reduced price. So, boom, I bag it. I grab the Great Garlo and uh, it's probably one of the greatest decisions I ever made in my life, I reckon. 
I don't have any regrets in life, but I think if I'd have left that Great Garlow, it would be one of the big, the single greatest regrets that I would ever have as a toy collector or as a man. It's not a Japanese toy, it's the last thing I expected to see in Japan, but the fact I found one there um, was was a, a momentous occasion. Obviously, I had to get this back to England, and, and getting this stuff back to England was one of the craziest things that I ever had to do. Like, opening this box when we got back, unpacking all the toys, I took some pictures, and it was like, every, I was so scared to open each suitcase. Like, you see videos of people throwing suitcases around and shit like that, and, you, and I'm... And I'm thinking, please, just let my Great Garlou be alright. If every other thing got damaged and the Great Garlou was alright, that wouldn't be as bad. Because this is like a really brittle plastic, like, kind of... It almost feels like ceramic. It's so, such an old brittle plastic. So I've wrapped it in old clothes. Luckily, when we got back, it was in one piece. And it now resides nicely on my shelf. I think the lesson of that, that little story is that if you see something and you know you're never going to see it again, just buy that shit. Don't worry. It's always going to hold its value if you do want to sell it. That's going in the fucking grave with me. Great Garlou is going into the grave with, with me when I die. I'm never going to get rid of that. And I love it. And it's one of the favourite things that I've ever picked up. So yeah, if you see something and you want it, just get it. Because you're never going to see that again. And you'll spend all your life telling the story about how you left it. And nearly got it and you didn't. The Great Garlou could have been the one that got away. One of the best things about toy hunting in Japan is just the fact of how much everyone there just gets it. It's crazy. Like we live in a Western world where... Loads of people have like pop funkos and things like that, but it's still very much frowned upon or seen as weird or like geeky to have like a house full of toys like I have. But when you're in Japan, no, no one thinks like that. In Japan, everyone loves that shit. Everybody embraces the stuff that they grow up loving and uh, and it's rife in the shops. You can see like you've got s fucking 100 shops that are seven floors tall that are just full of toys. So it's like just the mecca for toy collecting if you're anything like me and, and this is the stuff that you love picking up. We really hope that you've enjoyed this mini series of toy hunting in Japan. It was a lot of hard work trying to film it around trying to have a holiday and stuff as well. I've got to give shouts to Claudia for filming me all the way around Japan. Like there were so many times where I'd spent hours in these shops, hours and hours looking at what I wanted and that kind of thing. So it really means a lot that we could have that we could put this together and it got such a good reception from you guys that have enjoyed watching it. Shouts to everybody that's got in touch with me since watching the episodes building up to this, saying how much they enjoyed the episodes. There is some more episodes coming out. Not toy hunting episodes, but, but other wicked stuff that all goes on in Japan that we managed to film little mini documentaries on, so watch out for that. As always, thank you so much for checking out the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We're also on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And on top of all that, we recently set up a Patreon, so please check that out and find out how you can help us make Slime House bigger and better than ever. Don't forget to check out all the other cool stuff on our channel and we'll catch you next time on Slimehouse TV.